With election day tomorrow, we will give you a look at what states are currently still up for grabs for each candidate. And we will also tell you how states are preparing for possible trouble after the presidential election is announced. Maroon News 8 starts now. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Hello and welcome to Murrow News 8. I'm Brooke Bovenkam. And I'm Olivia Mayo. Election day is tomorrow, so remember to make your vote count by having your ballot deposited or postmarked by tomorrow. Election help is available from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. at the Whitman County Election Office in Colfax. Ballot boxes, replacements, replacement ballots, and accessible voting equipment is all available. Uh, under, er, unstaffed ballot deposit boxes are available 24-7 and are located in the alley behind the election office in front of the Oaksdale Library and adjacent to the Northwest Grain Grounds office on Southeast Paradise Street just outside of Henrich Trading Company, below the Rosar sign in the parking lot and on the WSU campus outside west entrance of the Cub on Terrell Mall. The final day of the 2024 presidential campaign is underway. Early vote trackers show that over 75 million Americans have already voted in person early or by mail. With that being said, CBS News's most recent polling analysis shows the race between Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump is still a toss up in the seven battleground states. Harris is crisscrossing Pennsylvania today with events in Allentown, Reading, and Pittsburgh followed by a star-studded concert and rally in Philadelphia. Trump started his day in Raleigh, North Carolina and then headed to Pennsylvania for rallies in Reading and Pittsburgh. And he will end with a rally in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The system awards electoral college votes to each state based on the number of members of Congress who represent that state. The winner needs 270 electoral votes to secure the presidency. Because of the electoral college system, a small number of states are considered battleground states, the locations that are competitive enough that either Harris or Trump could win there. These states include Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Nebraska District 2, Wisconsin, as well as Pennsylvania, which is emerging as the most crucial battleground state in this election. Donald Trump won, by the, won this state by less than 1% point in 2016 and lost by 1% point in 2020. Harris remains competitive there and the state is classified as a toss-up. Ahead of the election, the FBI reports a slight uptick in reported election security threats, a boost that officials say could simply be due to heightened awareness of interference efforts. The FBI's National Election Command post launched on Friday and will remain through at least Saturday. For multiple presidential elections now, Russia has sought to influence the White House race as well as many different cyber attack threats. Tuesday is general election day and voters have many decisions to make in Washington. The vote by mail election includes four tax cutting initiatives. Federal races for president, U.S. Senate and Congress will be decided. Be sure to vote if you choose so. Millions of Americans and people around the world are anxious to know the outcome of the U.S. presidential race, but they shouldn't expect final results on on election night. This year, local state and state certification deadlines range from two days after November 5th to more than a month. And more whooping cough cases have popped up in the Palouse. We'll tell you where those cases are primarily at. And one person has been arrested in connection to the brawl on College Hill. We'll tell you who after the break. Eleven more people in Whitman County have come down with whooping cough this week. 
Whitman County Public Health reports that 48 local residents have contracted the illness. The agency noted the outbreak was almost entirely among WSU students. Women County Commissioner Michael Largent announced his resignment at today's commission's meeting. Largent is encouraging people to apply for the post. Applications must live in District 3. The process will begin after Largent steps down in January. A WSU fraternity student has been arrested for felony assault after allegedly injuring a man during last month's brawl on College Hill. Taylor Colbertson was arrested Friday night by Pullman PD outside of the Lambda Chi Alpha House on multiple charges. On Thursday, 47-year-old David Peer from Moscow was sentenced to 10 years for possessing child sex abuse material after law enforcement received a tip. Peer was on probation for a prior con Eviction in another state, officer seized his cell phone, which had over a thousand images of child porn. Saturday afternoon, Whitman County Sheriff deputies arrested a 32-year-old Derek Adams for leading local law enforcement on a high-speed chase ending in a crash. Adams is being charged with felony warrants, second-degree assault, and vehicle theft. Whitman County Sup the Superior Court's record system has been hacked, causing local court issues. Judge John Hart is not making any changes with his lower court as his staff have the ability to continue operating normally. Officials hope to have the system fixed and back online next week. And with all of this cold weather outside as we walk to class today, Sam, what can we look forward to this week? Well, hey, Olivia, this afternoon, expect stormy weather with high winds. In today's weather, we have a high of 46 and a low of 35 with 24 mile, mile per hour winds today. It's going to be cold. The sunrise will be at around 630 and sunset at 430. And going into tomorrow's weather, it will be somewhat similar. It'll be a high of 44 and a low of 27. So expect it to be way colder tomorrow. Get your coats ready because November is going to be cold. We have winds going from 16 miles per hour and it's supposed to stay this way through the week. Going through the whole, uh, whole state here, it's going to be rainy in Olympia with a high of 54 and a low of 44. Seattle's 57 and 41 with a little bit more sun, but it's still going to be pretty rainy over there. Yakima in the Tri-Cities is somewhat similar with highs of 60s and lows of mid-30s. And going into Pullman and uh, Spokane, Spokane we have a high of 46 and a low of 33. With Pullman, a high of 45 and a low of 35. And of course, expect crazy winds. And going into the five-day forecast, coming in on Tuesday, a high of 44 and a low of 30. It's going to be sunny Tuesday and Wednesday, so expect some sun. Wednesday, we have a high of 45 and a low of 29, so it will be colder. Um, going into Thursday, expect sun as well with a high of 47 and a low of 31. Friday, high of 49, low of 38. And then Saturday, it will be a little rainy. Let's go back to the ladies for more news. Thanks, Sam. The 2025 football schedule is finally complete. We'll tell you who was on, who and what team was the last edition after the break. Days, months. Hey, I'm Jim from across the street. Years. I'd like to give you this. A lifetime. Can rush by without realizing what we're missing. We lose some of the best moments, some that may never repeat. Come on. Or detach from people around us. Our loved ones grow used to this pattern. But it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. It's never too late to live a full life again. Hear how many of us Vietnam veterans have managed our mental health and reconnected with our families. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. Washington State Athletics announced Friday that it has added a road contest at James Madison University to its 2025 football schedule. The game at JMU is scheduled for November 22nd in Harrisburg, Virginia, marking the first meeting between the two programs. The edition of James Madison finalizes the WSU 2025 football schedule, which includes six home games, six road games. 
The football team plays at home this week against Utah State. WSU is currently ranked 20 in this week's AP poll. WSU basketball is back. Women's basketball will be will host Eastern Washington at Beasley Coliseum in the team's 2024-25 season opener today. The game will tip off at 4 p.m. WSU hits the road to continue their non-conference slate at Stanford on Thursday, November 7th. WSU men's team will play right after the women's today. The Cougars will welcome the Vikings of Portland State to tip off at 8 p.m. to open their 2024-25 season. Isaiah Watts and Parker Garretts return as the only remaining student athletes from the 2023-24 roster, which reached the, double, the NCAA tournament second round. The Washington State Cougar team defeated San Francisco Dons 1-0 Saturday night in San Francisco. WSU true freshman Campbell scored 46 seconds into the match, which proved to be the game-winning goal in the Cougars' final road contest of the West Coast Conference play. Looking at tennis, senior Hanny and sophomore Martina each posted straight sets wins to lead Washington State during the final day of play Sunday at the Ducks Invitational at the Student Tennis Center. With only singles being contested Sunday, the Cougars faced Boise State winning two of their five matches. In rowing, this, the Washington State rowing team wrapped up their fall portion of the competition Sunday morning at Lake Washington. The Cougars opened the day with women's collegiate eight heat. WSU placed fifth, the Washington boats, and just four tenths of a second behind fourth place, Gonzaga. WSU or Washington State Cougar or Washington State cross country freshman Curie raced into the 2024 West Coast Conference Cross Country Men's Championship Saturday morning in California as the Cougars claimed third in men's and women's races. Freshman Chepta led the Wazoo women's with a third place finish as both WC squads finished third in the team standings. Thanks Olivia. Coming up we will take a look at the national day, day for today and for all of you with a sweet tooth. We'll tell you what it is next. It feels like no matter where you look, the state of the world's getting worse. Oceans full of plastic, an endless amount of waste, and a possible task ahead of fixing our beloved planet. But change can't happen if you do nothing. So here's where you should start. Reduce. Why? Because Americans produce more than 200 million tons of waste every year, and you don't want to add to that. Reuse. Why? Because reusing and repurposing cuts back on unnecessary waste and it gives things a chance at new life. Recycle. Why? Because recycling creates jobs. It helps our community and it helps our planet. And after doing all this, what will we be left with? We'll be left with a planet that will slowly start to heal. We'll be left with more money in our pockets. We'll be left with more opportunity for work. And most importantly, we're left with hope for the future. So reduce, reuse, recycle. Today is National Candy Day. It's a day to celebrate with your favorite candy goodies. And you know, as those basketball games are starting today, I will probably head down to Beasley, grab a little sweet treat, some candy, and watch the games. Yeah, for are sure. you guys going to get some candy in today? Yeah, you know, it seems like lately after Halloween, all, all of my teachers were trying to get um, rid of their Halloween candy, so I ended up with quite a bit. So have some in my bag. Um, thank you, Marvin. I have a <laughs> <laughs> and you, Sam, are you going to get your little sweet treat in today? I'm a Mike and Ike's guy, so okay. I'm going to go with Mike and Ike's yeah. for sure today. Yeah. Have you ever had the sour Mike and Ike's? Those might be my favorite. They're so good. I love sour Mike and Ike's. Sour candy is my favorite for mm -hmm. sure. And then I kind of like the chocolate, but I'm big on like gummy candy. I don't. I don't really like chocolate as much. I mean, I don't know. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and catch us next time on Wednesday. Have a great night.